Romans chapter 3, quickly. Verse 23. If you have it, say amen. amen. And the Bible reads, For all have sinned and fall short thank you, of the glory of God. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Y'all still with me? Whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness. Because in his forbearance, God has passed over the sins that were previously committed. Y'all still in here? To demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. For the sake of emphasis, I want you to return to verse 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Under the theme this weekend, I got a reason to sing. I want to express to you this lesson entitled, Turn It Up, Somebody's Playing My Song. I say, turn it up. I didn't say turn up. Turn it up, somebody's playing my song. Music is a very powerful force. Music has the ability to unlock corridors that have been closed for many years. Music as it has been expressed is the universal language. It teaches us, it talks to us, and it allows us to express things that Perhaps we can't unless it is accompanied by song. Music is powerful. It has the ability to hit us in places that we didn't even know existed. I say music is powerful. It has the ability to vex you in a moment and allow you to be in a space that seems all by yourself. I say music is powerful. And when I think of music, I often think of the fact that everybody has a song. Go with me if I can use your sanctified imaginations and I want you to drive along with me. Can you ride with me? And we're riding in your car. How hot y'all want it to be? Let's say 78. Can it be 78? Wisconsin, can it be 78? It's 78 degrees. Can we roll down our windows? Anybody got any hair that can be blown back? Is it your hair? Come, come on back with me. Come on back with me. Come on back in the car. Come on back in the car. It's 78 degrees. The wind is blowing for what we got. And have you ever been riding like this and it seemed like today is a good day? Yeah. Hey, you got problems. You got challenges. But when you're riding at 78 degrees with your window down and the wind blowing through whatever you got, it seems like just for a moment that everything is going to be okay. Can y'all come with me? You see children playing and getting along. It's saying today is a good day. The, the grass has grown and everything is nice and green. I say today is a good day. And all of a sudden, you hear in the background the tantalizing whispers of what is beginning to sound like your song. 
Can you hear your song? I said, can you hear your song? And you know what happens when you hear your song. You see, when you hear your song, everything stops. When you hear your song, some of you, you turn up your radio as loud as you can. If folk are in the car, you tell them, shh. I wish y'all gonna help me this morning. You tell everybody, be quiet. If, if your kids in the car, you reach back and y'all be quiet. My song is on. Can you feel what your song is doing? Your song takes you to places in your mind you haven't been since 1976. Okay, I wasn't around back then. In 1994, you begin to hear your song. And you know what happens, right, when you hear your song? It begins to make you start thinking about stuff. Have you ever heard your song and it started to get you to a place where you could hear things again that you hadn't heard in a long time? Have you ever heard your song and it made you feel stuff? Maybe it's your breakup song, Lord have mercy. Yeah, that you begin to feel things that you haven't felt in a long time. You know what happens when you hear your song? You begin to be able to smell sometimes and taste things that remind you of what happened the first time you heard your song. See, songs can take you places that you haven't traveled in 15 to 25 years. Okay, have you ever heard your song and you hadn't heard it in a long time and you knew all the words? <laughs> you knew all the words to your song and you knew verse one, two, and the ad lives on the end. I'm trying to ask you, what happens when you hear your song? See, music is powerful. And when you hear your song, it can take you places that you've never been before. And so in this passage, I want to give you, not this morning, three points, but I want to give you three tracks. Amen. And when you hear your song, I give you permission to say, that's my song. Is that all right this morning? When you hear your song, it's all right this morning for you to say, that's my song. Amen, somebody? Amen. Now, now come with me quickly. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. Paul shares with us. He starts out by saying, for all have sinned. Now, the name of this song is from the victim to vindication. From the victim to vindication. Let's see if this is your song. Y'all gonna come with me? Paul says, for all have seen. In other words, he's saying there in the active tense that everybody has sinned, is sinning, and will sin. The mood there in the Greek is indicative, which indicates that it is a real thing. The fact that we see it every single day. Do I have a witness in here? He says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. This idea of falling short is the fact that God has a glorious standard for all of our lives. And every single day, God expects us to be perfect, realizing that we are imperfect. And so as we strive to do what God wants us to do and live the lives that God has for us to live, the reality is even on our best day, despite our best effort, every single day we fall short of where God has called us to be. And so we realize then that even before we began, we were victims. And yet the Bible says in verse 24, however, being justified. Freely by grace. The idea of justification is the fact that even though in my reality I sin, because I fall short of the glory of God, because of God's love, what God does is God declares me righteous through justification. 
In other words, when we all went to court, we all sinned. The jury said that we're guilty of our sin. Our friends said that we were guilty of our sins. Our family said we were guilty of our sins. And even God says, you are guilty. But then he says, but you're free. Does anybody know what it's like to be guilty and then be free? Does anybody know what it's like to have your punishment delayed or stopped because somebody loved you enough to say, not right now? Okay, okay. Has anybody in here ever had a, a whooping that you knew was coming? <laughs> I'm trying to help you with justification quickly here, quickly. I, I can recall growing up, and, and I can remember I did something real terrible, and, and I remember my daddy saying, go on in your room. Some of y'all know what that means when they say go on in your room and wait. And they make you wait. And I remember on one day my mother had a conversation with my dad and he said, Tim, my father's name is Timothy Sr. And he said, Tim, listen, uh, uh, he, he didn't mean it like that. And I began to put my ear on the door and I, and I felt I had a chance. <laughs> and my dad said, no, no, he did this thing wrong. And my mama said, but no, listen, he's struggling. He's going through puberty. He's losing all of his good mind. Listen, give him a chance. Yeah. And, and my dad said, no, 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 it's time to take a stand. And my mother said, but, but please, this time, just, just, and y'all know when, when this is how, I don't know if y'all ever heard of deliberation from your parents, but you in there going, yes, mama, yes. And, and when it goes one side, you're going, daddy, no. And, and then you're going, mama, please say that, yes. And so my father said, all right. <laughs> Called me out of the room. He said, I'll tell you what, you got by this time. <laughs> I'm trying to help y'all with just the patient. Now go on in your room. Has anybody ever had to do a silent shout? When you walk in the room and you closed your door and you made sure that the coast, coast was clear and you did your Pharrell Williams happy dance in your room because you realized that you were going to be punished and at the nick of time Israel. Yeah. If you can recall, 
uh, on the day uh, of atonement, uh, that the Yom Kippur in the Old Testament, when the priest one time a year would come in all in white, dressed in his royal ephod, which was 12 stones that represented the 12 tribes of Israel. Y'all help me in this place. And he would come before God and he would make a propitiation or he would seek to appease God on behalf of Israel. I'm saying to you on this morning that you need propitiation. God has paid for your debts. Oh, okay, some of y'all like me, you need a little bit more time. Listen, do you remember? Do you remember when when Jacob stole the birthright from Esau? Yeah. And do you remember when, when Jacob stole the birthright? His mother said, You better get out of here now. And he ran away and he married Leah, I believe, and Rachel. He spent several years out in the country. And as he was traveling back, one of the servants came and said, Jacob, I got something to tell you. Your brother Esau, I wish y'all helped me this morning. Your brother Esau is on the horizon. And so Jacob did what most of us would do. I'm going to see something on my behalf. I'm going to see what is happening here. I'm going to see a propitiation, an appeasement, so that he may accept me for what I have done. And so the Bible says that Jacob sent their head this propitiation and Esau was pleased and they were reunited. That's propitiation. You need somebody to pay for your debt. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Do y'all remember when Moses went up to the mountain of Sinai? And you recall he went up there and spent several days there and God gave him the Ten Commandments. And you remember when he came back down from the mountain? And all of the children of Israel, most of them rather, were serving the idol God that Aaron had put together. Y'all remember this? And do you remember that Moses was so upset that he broke the Ten Commandment tablets? Y'all remember that? And do you remember the part that they don't tell is that after this, they said, Moses said, choose which side you're going to be on. If you're with God or you're against God. But if I send the south side church of Christ, Look at y'all. It's going to pay off every continent of everyone here. I wonder what your expression would be. So y'all didn't want propitiation the other way. I, I, I wonder if today we sign what kind of response would we see on this morning? Some of you, we would not be able to contain. And I'm saying, if you can have a cardinal forgiving, I wonder what your response should be when the song that is played from power to propitiation hits your soul. I wonder what kind of response we should see when you realize that your sins God has paid for before you came into the world. Maybe that's your song. And if those two aren't your song, then maybe there's a song called I Was Blind, But Now I See. Can y'all come with me quickly? Quickly, quickly, listen, verse 25 again, whom God set forth as propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate, underline that, demonstrate his righteousness. Because in his forbearance, God has passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness. God here is showing us all of us have sinned. There ain't nan person here that has lived a pure and holy, perfect life. If you're in here and you can hear me, even if you can't, you have sinned. Here's also what I know. When you leave here, at some point you will sin again. Yes, sir. And so what God has 
done is justified you by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Then he has propitiated or paid for your sins. And now we realize why God did it in the first place. God says, I did it, verse 26, because I wanted to demonstrate at the present time my own righteousness. Have you ever been to a place in your life that you've been blessed and you didn't know it? Has anybody ever been to a place in your life where you've been enjoying all kind of blessings and sometimes you realize at a later date that you did and you have no idea the kinds of things that have been done for you? I'm trying to see if this is somebody's song here. Have you ever been to the place in your life where you realize that you have simply been blind to all the blessings and wonderful things that God has given you only to get you to a place where you are able to look back and say, my God, I received all of these blessings. I can't believe of all the stuff I did that God has blessed me this way. Anybody here know you should have been dead? Anybody know that you should have been on the side of the road? And yet God has blessed us. The reality is we have been blind at times to God's demonstration of his own righteousness. You see, the fact is God has always been right. God has always been right. God is right, and God will always be right. And once you get to the place you understand that God is good, you can have an appreciation for the fact that even though you've been blind, now because you have matured, you can see. All right, now. Amen. And listen here, I don't know which one of these songs connect to you. <laughs> you got my permission to do it. Amen. You got my permission. If you done heard this song, you can say, that's my song. But you know, there's all kind of songs in the world today. There's all kind of songs in the world today that communicate certain messages to us. You see, we're drawn to songs sometimes by tune. But really, if we're honest, deeper than all of that is some lyrics. And there are some songs that hit us in ways, as I mentioned, that we've never seen before. And so I don't know about your song, but I can tell you why I sing. I don't know why you sing, but I can tell you why I sing. Amen, somebody? You see, I know that Rolls Royce sang, love don't live here anymore. But I sing, Jesus is the love that won't let me go. I know Michael Jackson saying beat it, but I say draw me nearer to Jesus. And I know Louis Armstrong said it's a wonderful world, but I say heaven is on the other side. I know that Bobby Brown saying it's my prerogative, but I say humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. There's been a song in the Word of God 
that should hit you somewhere in your life, that should produce in you the kind of faith that God can be pleased of. I don't know if it's trust in the Lord with all your heart. It lead not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. I don't know if that's your song. Maybe your song is, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? I don't know if your song is, he is the peace that passes all understanding. I don't know if that's your song, but I know there's a song for you. And you ought to find your song so that God can bring in you a heart that will be determined to see God. My friends, I don't know where you are in your life this morning. I don't know what you might be dealing with. Yes, it's easy at Sursa to smile. It's easy to act like everything is okay. But the reality is there are times in our life when we just need some help. I, I don't know about you, but there's some times in life where I just need some help. There's some things that my wife can't do. There's some things I can't get from my brother. There's some stuff, do I got anybody here witness? There's some stuff that you got to get down on your knee for and talk to God about and allow God to do what God has always wanted to do. I'm saying God is willing and able to bless you. If you're here this morning and you may be wondering if you're a Christian, you may be wondering about how you can be a Christian. Perhaps you were invited here this morning by somebody and they just wanted you to have an experience, a transformational opportunity. Then my friends, this morning is your chance. Amen. The Bible is very simple about how one can be saved. The Bible says, listen, I, I got to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. What is the gospel? The gospel is the fact that God's son, mm -hmm. whom was the best of heaven, God sent him down through the portals of our atmosphere, impregnated in his mother Mary, born onto the earth, lived a life worth following, a life of perfection, gave his life, and died on the cross. The gospel message is not that Jesus just died. We preach that very well. But the beautiful and powerful part of the gospel is that Jesus not only died, and was buried, but rose from the grave. That is the fundamental aspect and hinge of our faith. That we believe that Jesus rose from the grave. And because of that, we can have everlasting and eternal life. You've got to hear that gospel you've heard it on this morning, Romans 10, 17. The Bible says that hearing the word produces faith. But when you hear that word, you've got to believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. You've got to believe, as the Hebrew writer would say, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. Yeah. One must repent, which is a change of your mindset. It is the understanding that I can't enter new relationships with old thinking. Right. Sisters, come on here and say amen for some of these men. <laughs> you can't enter new relationships with old thinking. And there has to be a changing of your mind. Yeah. Romans chapter 12 and 2. My friends, then you must be willing to confess the sweetest name that can ever be stated. Yeah. Jesus is Lord in Christ. Yeah. Matthew 10, 32 and 33 shows us that we should acknowledge him so that he acknowledges us at the stairways of heaven. But my friend, baptism isn't the plan. Mark 16, 16 simply states, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Amen. If it says it, why not do it? But if you are a Christian and you're here with us on this morning and you have found yourself in a place where you're struggling with your understanding of what God can do, perhaps you have some decisions that you've got to make when you get back home that Sursa can't fix. Amen. Perhaps you're in the midst of a storm on this morning and nobody else seems to care. Jesus does. And he is able and willing to help you. And as the song says, he will carry you through. I don't know what's on your heart this morning, only God can. But I know what God can do. 
And we're simply going to ask this morning if you are in need of prayer, if you have confession of sin, or if you just need somebody to stand by your side and hold your hand, we're going to ask that you come forward. We're going to make a line here, and we're going to make sure before you leave this room that we pray for you because we believe in the power of prayer. Why don't you stand?